And so we come to our final story this evening. Sadness is usually associated with stories about death, but in this instance, we're talking about a woman who had a near-death experience and who tells her tale with great happiness. Valerie Waters went to meet Roisin Fitzpatrick in Bray in County Wicklow and Roisin is making art and she's writing books in order to share her life-changing experience with as many people as possible. Dubliner Roisin Fitzpatrick lives here in Bray, County Wicklow. Her house is also her workplace, as she is an artist and a writer. Roisin wasn't always an artist. In the 1990s, she worked for the European Bank. Then when she was 35, she had a brain hemorrhage. While lying in the IC unit, she had an extraordinary experience. You know, so many thoughts were going through my mind and, you know, first of all, well, certainly not the best day I've ever had, that's for sure. But then it's also, you know, like, is this it? Is this it? Is my life over? And, it's, and it was really quite frightening. Then everything changed. Literally, it was like that. I found myself out of my body and I saw a light, a beautiful radiant light. And at the same time, I felt enveloped by a love, embraced by this pure sense of love that was nothing like I'd ever experienced before. It was so pure and so unconditional. And I kind of keyed into this beautiful, beautiful, blissful, sublime sense of oneness. And there was a hushed silence, a profound sense of peace and it was, quite frankly, blissful. I was brought to the place where everything was pure energy and motion. And I realized that this is the nothing that Buddhists talk about. When they say to meditate in nothing, it's actually that place of no thing. It's before it forms physical matter, before it takes a physical form. And recently, while researching for the book that I've just written, what I learned was that one of the Gaelic ways of saying may you rest in peace is Sulashiri, which means the eternal light. And that just tied everything together for me because I realized that is exactly what I had connected with. And I realized that this is the deepest truth of who I am, as it is of everybody. This experience may have just been for a few moments, but it has changed Roisin Fitzpatrick profoundly. She has now recovered fully from her illness and is in good health. Her creations with silk and crystals are reminders of that near-death experience. She trades as artist of the light. I realized then, okay, this is actually what I'm supposed to do. This is how I can share the experience of the light because it's so difficult to articulate in words this experience because we literally don't have the language. We've all the language for war and violence and all the different types of machinery and everything. But love, the pure essence of who we are, we just lack the vocabulary. So initially I started to express this through the art and I then created more pieces. I had a couple of exhibitions here and then I brought the art to America where it's been a huge success and I'm on my 11th exhibition now. Roisin's artworks are gaining more and more recognition, both here in Ireland and in New York, where her work has been exhibited in several shows. It has even been advertised in lights in Times Square. Her work is also to be seen in the main foyer of the National Concert Hall in Dublin. The story behind the artwork has led Roisin to write a book called Taking Heaven Lightly. Her near-death experience has been validated by Dr. Bruce Grayson, one of the pioneers and medical experts in this field in the US for over 40 years. Roisin's intention is that the book will be of comfort to many readers. I wanted to use the word heaven in the title because people associate that with the afterlife and then I had to have light in it somewhere 
And so it was like heaven and light. And it's like, oh, taking heaven lightly. And also as well, I like the pun of it, to take life lightly. Because sometimes we can become so serious in life and actually really miss the point of what it's all about. And also as well, it's to demystify death and encourage people to really live their best life. Because when we can recognize that there's no such thing as death, ironically, it gives us the freedom to live life. And that's what I would share in this book. So the first part is a memoir. So it's my journey of, of connecting with this life. But the second part, way more importantly, it very, provides very, very clear, simple and effective ways of connecting with this light and reconnecting with this light so that everyone has, if they choose to open up to the possibility that there might be more to life, that we might be part of something bigger, that the reader can access this in their own lives. And the essence is still exactly the same, whether I'm sharing the light through the art as artist of the light or through this book, Taking Heaven Lightly. It's always about connecting into the pure truth of who we are, which is this love and this powerful eternal light. Because each and every one of us is so much more powerful than we can begin to imagine when we let all this other dross just fall away. Sometime after Roisin's near-death experience, both of her parents died within 10 weeks of each other. While she misses their physical presence, she is sure that they too are at one with the eternal light. My intention now is I just want to be as light-filled and as bright going through life, and then when I go out, go out with a bang. And that's what I intend to do. An interesting woman is Roisin Fitzpatrick and you can read her book, Taking Heaven Lightly, because it's in the shops now. And we